maybe we could just start off and just talk about like where you grew up and what your childhood was like and maybe how you got into filmmaking. Yeah, me, I like um, I grew up like in Paris and I'm like all my life was in Paris, like almost 40 years. Um, I'm just like since two years ago in South of France, but before I was like in Paris. And I grew up like in a really, I will say, uh, poor family, like my, my mother like used to clean stuff, my father also like really <laughs> the bad level of everything because she was cleaning. I, I don't know who said that in, in English, but people who are cleaning stuff for company or whatever. So yeah, yeah, it was, uh, but they, they work like a lot of, uh, they, they used to have like three jobs and it was good because with all this money they were doing, uh, because working a lot, I was like able to to uh, live in Paris, but in south of Paris was really not expensive before. But it was good. I didn't live in a project stuff or maybe in where somewhere. Sometimes it's a bit complicated because you know I'm like a French, half French, half Portuguese, and I am I'm, I'm part because my mother was like a Portuguese, and. Uh, and the thing is, I don't speak Portuguese. Uh, she never want to, me to, to learn uh, because she was really, you know, during, well, it's a long story, but she was like cut with the Portugal, unfortunately. And, um, and then when I'm saying that, it's like they were like super working a lot. And I was like really alone with my sister, like waiting for my parents coming back, like every day, every morning, etc. So I was like watching TV, watching TV, watching TV, watching TV. And before us in France, it was like two kind of content, but it was amazing. We have like the best content forever. American content, all the shitty stuff from USA, you know, like all the um, uh, kit, you know, or like the Knight Rider, uh, Super Cop, all the shitty American show and all the Japanese am am uh, uh, animation, all. So imagine when you grew up, like I was watching every morning, my parents was not here, opening the, uh, watching Sensei, uh, uh, all the Japanese stuff, uh, cop stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then when I came back to the, to the, to home, I was waiting somewhere and, and we uh, turned on the TV and watching that. So, and that helped me a lot, fight me a lot uh, now, <laughs> not before. And then, uh, so yeah, this is my childhood. And then what happened like around like the big uh, for me revelation about creativity come really when I say creativity, you know, came uh, around like 11 when uh, I started to have like UMTV rap, right? So, and uh, from there, I just wanted to be a black man. And I was like, you know, I was like, I'm black, you know? And you know, the, the, and it was funny because I was acting like a American rapper and like, uh, and I was in love of that. And for me, they were like, wow, wow, this is so cool. Fresh prints, all that, all this color, all this UMTV rap was, you know, the UMTV rap with the color. And for example, now my house is a lot of always pop color. You can see all this retro stuff with color for the 90, etc. And that for me, it was like, wow. And with all this manga, Japanese animation mixing with all that, you know, um, it was, uh, it was like, what is Japanese animation? It's fast edit, fast movement, camera movement, pushing, blah, 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 etc. Fast dynamic cut, color. So imagine you grew up with that, with hip hop, but you know the hip hop from US with a lot of color from the 90, 95, etc. Really fresh, not as B.A.G., fresh. For me, it was everything, really, because I have no, no culture. My parents, imagine my mother, she's like, she imagine all her life she cannot read or write. Imagine even in her own language, because she never went to school. To school, so she was really the the bad level of everything, job etc. But she was just working for us. So the thing is, for me, imagine the culture. We had no book at, at home because my my mother she cannot read. My father was working so much that he cannot. So imagine like the only culture that you have it's. UMTV rap, uh, rap music uh, from USA, and all this 
music, uh, industry of whatever, and content from TV. So, you know, like, whew, so all that was like, um, and then for sure at school, it was a bit difficult. So I just like tried and I was like so bad at school. Imagine I was like, so I cannot imagine my mother, my mother just was talking to me with a, with in French with a bad accent, right? Really bad accent because she was Portuguese. So, but she never learned to me Portuguese. It's like, imagine your mother, it's talking with my English accent in English and never talking to you in French. Maybe this is the same. So I was a bit dyslexic and my father was working a lot. So it's, the relation was a bit more, uh, not complicated, but a bit uh, not here. And then the thing is, it was like, okay, I was really bad, etc. So whatever. And then I said, okay, let's learn everything by heart. And I heard learn everything by heart with not understanding. And then I, I start to be better at school, manage not to go out of the school to do some random university, you know, like when you go somewhere and you don't know what you will do, it's really random and you do everything, right? But you know, I didn't know what to do, right? Just have go there, I have to, to continue. And why I'm saying that it's where I come from because after I tried to do some company, like doing some stuff because you have to find some ideas to do some money, working like everywhere and like doing like all the job ever, like, taking care of the ski that's cool, you know, um, during four, four years, taking, taking care of the kids, you know, during the vacation in the school, you know, like the, I don't know, we call that the, when there is no school, you go in a place when you have some animator doing some stuff, pizza uh, delivery, uh, selling some uh, food for dog in a, a mall, like all the shitty job ever you can do. Not for the kids. It was amazing with the kids. But the thing is like, so we try to do some money because I have to live. And uh, and then doing some project, blah, blah, blah. And what happened, I did like uh, try to do a website with a friend, like with a whatever, I don't know, <laughs> to do some advice. It was before all YouTube, etc. So we try to do some content uh, with own player, doing some content about uh, some how would say like some um, reparation <laughs> repair some stuff at home dny you know the do it yourself yeah do it yourself stuff because i was working in a shop selling some uh, some um, paintings i was like oh there is a big market here and let's do something here blah, 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 you know trying to do some stuff and then i start to buy some a camera to do some uh, shitty stuff and filming a friend doing some stuff like this, you know. And then, to be honest, it was super nice. And we tried to go on, uh, there, there were no tutorial, no YouTube at this year, just like, so imagine. And and I remember with After Effects, my friend doing some title stuff, etc. And I was doing, we are doing some good stuff with what we have. I remember it was like uh, a, a Panasonic, was the Panasonic, uh, what, the, two, uh, the one that everybody used to have, I uh, have to find the, the, and then what happened? Uh, a friend was doing some, was a, for a friend was doing a lot of music video of French rapper, etc. And at one time said, oh, go on stuff. Can you help us to do some uh, set design? It was like no money, you know, said design, you buy just a wallpaper, you have a wall, you put it. But I was the guy who was doing all this shit. So they say like, hey, come. And I started to do good stuff. And then I was helping them to everything, you know, putting the camera. But, you know, I was like, um, want, I like the creation, doing some create some stuff. And then, no, they were just filming and doing some uh, filmmaker stuff. And then what happened? At one point, we had some other friend doing editing, DP, but really corporate and uh, music, shitty music, bad, not bad, but bad, but filmmakers, one of the filmmakers, what we can try to do is, there is no red at the uh, uh, It was just a red one was launched. And then we built up a small company and we had the red one because a friend bought the one of the first red one. And that changed the game for us because we started to do some interview with the red one like wow why out of focus look you know with the dslr when everybody were trying to do out of focus and, and oh it looked like a, a movie oh yeah yeah 
and done music video and we built the company and I was doing everything. One was editor, one was DP, one was uh, director, one was uh, producer, you know? And then me, I was just here because I was cool and uh, and I was doing everything, you know, doing everything, helping. And then I learned everything from them, everything. Our company start to be bigger and bigger. We can start, we started to have some employee, but we were so much people that we are not doing money, right? Just the little stuff to live in Paris. But it was cool. We are trendy. People, wow, what? that's cool. They are cool people. And then we start to buy a red epic, you know, it changed the game again, uh, etc. And we were the first one, one of the first in France, because we were the first one with the red one. So imagine in France, one of the first. So everybody wanted to work with us, etc. because it was a revolution, right? But me, I was like, I knew nothing about cinema and nothing, nothing. Like even the red, like, I just know to turn on the button, maybe the ISO, maybe the shutter. And, but I start to learn to edit on Premiere After Effects. And I start to love Ready After Effects, like uh, doing some cool stuff, rotoscopy, transition, blah, 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 etc. But filmmaker style, you know, like. And, uh, and then, you know, sometimes the client call because we are doing a lot of corporate, full of corporate, doing money. And then we start to work for, for TV and doing big stuff for TV, big documentary big stuff and the, the 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 company we are two company and uh, and start to do millions like maybe uh, i don't know both company were maybe doing six million or, but for us it was a lot but we are so much employee and we are so much partner maybe six or seven at the end we have no money right <laughs> so but everybody was like a lot of love and so cool like a family and me i was learning from everybody here and i was the creative of the company Right. So when uh, an idea came or oh, for a TV show, for a TV show, like a documentary or like, um, you know, the opening TV show, you know, like for the title or corporate to find an idea, I had like a lot of ideas. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. And all these ideas come from, you know, my background. And after it will come, I will explain why I explained the beginning was I was watching, watching TV, etc. But I was the guy who was like, cool. But with no too much culture, French culture, no book, nothing. A bit like okay, he's a creative, but like this kind of organic um, and impulsive creativity. You know, oh, I have an idea, but you cannot, you don't know where it comes from. You know, it's oh, I have an idea, but people are like, this cool, cool guy, etc. And then one time a, a company called and said, okay. Uh, I would like to uh, to do with maybe 200k, and it was like a commercial. Wow, 200k to do a fucking commercial for us! It was like for 200k for us, we were doing a full big uh, TV TV show. When I say TV show, it's uh, not a TV series. Like when I say TV show, it's more like you know when you do like uh, the set design with people interviewing TV, the launch, etc., or a huge documentary. A documentary was around like 100k, 800k, a big documentary, you know, uh, etc. in France. So imagine for us, wow, like to do one minute, 200k, wow, we, we are doing Hollywood, right? So, and then you start to call the DP, you know, and we start to enter in the real advertisement uh, business. We are in the corporate, it's not the same game. For example, Remember that an editor for a corporate or a documentary is like now, right? It was like 200, right? 200, 250, maybe 300 for the good one. For a commercial, it was like 600, 700 for wow, how you can pay an editor 700 or a DP was 700 euro, right? So it was more than 10 years ago. Huh? So, but you can rely. And then when a DP says, ah, it's 2K for a commercial, what? A day? and travel there and blah, blah, blah. what the f man no and then we call like director you know oh man we have a cool commercial and the guy say yeah it's 10k day what day what a day shooting yeah but you have like five days yeah, it's 50 what we have 200 we will not give you 50k but okay i can give you and i remember that for us even when the guy was saying like i take like five or six k it was like on 200k which is nothing for a director who is doing like a big commercial right it was like 
what? No, of course, no, we'll not pay 5K a director because we are paying like maybe 3K a month. You know? <laughs> so it, we are totally disconnected for the reality of the advertising. And then I, I, I say, okay, I will direct it. Right, because it's just people doing some shitty stuff, the battery, dancing, you know, uh, drifting, you know, like, okay, let's do that. And we find a really nice uh, small production service in Cape Town. And I was with a friend, producer, and we did like with that our first commercial. And for me, it was like, wow. And it, to be honest, it was super, super cool with nothing, like <laughs> We have no traveling, no steady cam, everything was hand the hell, right? No money. Three sky panel, you know, like. And then um, it was super cool. And then I started to do a second one, third one, because after that, bring, etc. And then, of course, all the money you, 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 I was doing because people, ah, I want to be a director. You start, and I start to do director for other production, small stuff. But it was like sometimes 15k or 20k, or it was wow, a lot. But I was part of the company, so this money was going to the company. And then at one point, I was like, okay, uh, maybe there is something to do because I'm, I'm, but you know, I'm in a company with friends. And then, uh, and then I start to have a baby, you know, and uh, with my wife, and uh, and. Um, and at one point, you know, you, okay, I can go like freelance and doing director, but what is freelance? And what changed again? And this guy, I'm always like thinking about him. Uh, it's a big DP with called uh, Matthias Buka. Um, for me, one of the biggest in the, in the industry of music video and, 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 and commercial and also feature film because he did At Athena, you know, the Roma Gabras movie. And this guy, just I was talking on, on uh, Facebook, you know, it was a DP, oh, blah, 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 you know, when you start to, it was Facebook, no Instagram, imagine. Talking on Facebook and blah, blah, and the guy said, oh, you are doing good stuff. Oh, yeah, and me, I was like, this guy was a giant, right? talking to Matthias Bukka, but for me also it was like, I was not much also in the industry, it was a good DP, but super good. And blah, blah, and so oh, you are doing good. And I was working with a friend who is called Alex Jamin, who started to do, uh, my uh, friend DP was, we build up together. And we start to be a partnership and doing all the stuff all together. And, and then what happened, it's like, so we were like big friendship. And this Matthias Bukar, amazing guy, uh, just told me, ah, you have to, do I like what you are doing. It's super fresh, super cool, etc." It was not terrible, huh, to be honest, but he said like, oh yeah, man, etc." But there is something inside that. And I said, I would like to be director, but you know, in front of the company, etc." And the guy, this guy was amazing, busy, like all the good DP, gave, gave me two hours in Paris and we were, took a coffee and he explained me all the game, all how it works. Because when you are not in the game, you don't understand how it works. And me, I came from nowhere, so I have no contact. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, and he explained me and, and he gave me a contact of uh, uh, um, a producer who's called like Anthony Bargis, who was at Partizan. And, and I met this guy and then everything starts from here. And now you know the story. How now after after how every you start to build up, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to do this interview. Cool. Yeah. So those early on, um, it's good that you kind of yeah figured it out as you went along and were able to, I guess, make a business out of it and make money. And like some some people will go to film school for a few years and then realize it's too much work and. It's just quit like a lot of people get into filmmaking and they don't really last but um in terms of those early on commercials are they on like your vimeo page or are they kind of like in the archive somewhere uh, yeah i keep some stuff um you know what? i can send you the link also of some stuff uh because maybe i hide some stuff i keep it and i i really want to keep it because i'm i'm proud of that it's the first stuff and for us first stuff it's really cool um and then I did like a short, 
really short film also it was like a one two minutes from nikon film festival i think it's on the page or like a music video and you, in the first you can see it really bottom you can see everything that i've done for the first stuff you can see it really done with nothing um yeah i i keep that and i keep all the progression cool yeah i think the first i don't know if it's in order but it's the first one's your home speaker reinvented it's one of the it's one of the first yes in this one i was into the company that was one of the companies and then you did express your style this this was this this one was the first one i told i told you that we did really like a first commercial and i remember what is crazy for for this one like it was like yeah this one is so important for me because uh, it bring me a lot of job because when I launched it, all this color stuff, uh, striking, it was, everybody was doing imagine at this time. And maybe you remember, everybody was doing log C, you know, the log C style with really moody, you know, when you put, you remove the, the loot and everybody was no, no contract. And me, I, I was not in the industry. So imagine you just do what you want to do. And me, I just do this one colorful, uh, blah, 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 people moving crazy. To be honest, it was maybe one of the first stuff. One, I would say once, some stuff. But, and then I have a lot of cool, ah, oh, we want that, it's so cool, etc. And so people are like, oh, it's too saturated, too much color. And you can see now it's not saturated. There is not too much movement. Now, when you see what is happening, like crazy movement, we go into the car, we move a lot of color. Now it's, and then, uh, yeah, so this one is, is really particular for me because also um, the thing is, I remember when I was doing the, the treatment for this one, it was my first treatment. I didn't know what is it. And I was in the hospital and my just my wife was giving birth and she was like just dying on the bed. And me, I had my baby here. And you know what? I have like fever. I like the flu. So I was like dying, literally you know, with a mask like this, my baby here writing the f***ing treatment because I need to win this one. This is my first commercial. So, uh, so yeah, this one is, uh, is really, uh, maybe even now, yeah. but we had a good casting. I remember we had a good casting on this one. And so you kind of like taught yourself through doing like, you had those early on kind of like hip hop music video kind of influences. Were you influenced by any kind of like feature films or other other kind of things like that? You know, the thing is that I have no culture. I, I to be honest, my I'm so poor, but I'm so happy now because now um, I'm learning so much stuff. You know, it's not like your parents was in the photography or on the music or whatever. So me now I can like, oh, this photographer, oh, this book. So it's like, whew, for me, it's helping like to, you know, and why I'm saying that is because on movie, the first, oh, I'm not talking all the stuff from, you know, uh, back to the future, uh, of course, you know, all the stuff, but that it was part of my childhood. And that for me, it's amazing. But I will say the first big, all the stuff that break my mind, it was, of course, Akira. That this one, like, blow me, blow me up. And you can see a lot of inspiration of this color stuff, movement, etc. Uh, and a film that I saw it maybe, I don't know, was for me one of the best films. It was Mona to Society, you know, uh, from the Hugh Brother. Uh, and this one was like about gangster in LA, of course. You know, I was like, wow. And Boy in the Wood, et cetera, and New Jack City. So for me, it was like New Jack City, Boy in the Wood. I wanted to be a gangster, right? So I was like, ah, oh, that for me, it helped me. Uh, uh, right. It was my film. And then after, because I come from really like, I would say like uh, uh, popular stuff so uh, all my reference was really popular huh? it was not like a odr like really whole french movie like i didn't know right uh so um yeah it was after the big one like for me like start to break my mind it was like uh, it could be a bit strange but it was like fight club and was like exactly that everything that i like the visual the deep stuff but the color the vibrance the fun so it was like combining everything that 
I'm I am right. So I was like, oh, it's amazing for me. It was like I remember. I was like, okay, if I have to do something, it's something like that. And then after the second one that break my mind, of course, it's uh, Dark Knight. I, it's for me it's the same, you know, Batman, of course, and Bob. I, it's deep. It's perfect. Bam, bam. You know, I was like, okay, so. And now, of course, I start to find start in some year, try to relearn from movie stuff, etc. But you know, what is important? It's like um, you know, during years, people were saying to me exactly. I think it's important for because you know, uh, I don't know about the, the other industry or the other country, but in France, you know, if you don't have the culture. If you don't part of something, you know, mm, it's French style. So if you don't have culture about music, books, blah, 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 etc., or cinema culture, you are a bit dirty, right? But you know, the thing is now all things, I don't know how many years, but maybe 10 years, you know, the hip hop start to be one of the biggest markets in the world. Like you can see all the Travis Scott stuff, all the Air Jordan ceiling, so all the vibrancy of the color, all the, you know, all the color and all this stuff, like the popular stuff, right? Like you can see Drive, for example, the movie or whatever, or all this pop culture that was really not interesting start to be art, right? So, and then it helped me. It helped me because if I'm here, it's because this become bigger because I have nothing. So I was one of the guy who was like, no really culture the only culture was street culture and and uh pop culture and when i say pop like um, not pop culture but all this um eight 90s 80 culture like all this stuff from so it helped me and uh and also now you can and, and then i i was a bit sh um sh shame like to uh to uh for around all these people talking about movie. Like, I was like, oh, I don't know this movie. I was like, uh, discussion that editor, like, you know, geek, like people like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to watch it, you know? I was like, oh, yeah, good, I will watch it. And then I was like, so like, wow, I'm really bad. I'm really bad. So you are not confident, you know? I was like, always. And then at one point I said, hey, you know, uh, with some friends, right? To, but my style, has to take from everything that is from me. So what is from me? Japanese animation, hip hop, bam, moving, light. You know, like, so I was like, okay, this is what is in me and I control it. And I know that for me, I like the, the timings, the, na -na -na, the, the movement, the people, the surprising, the fun, etc. So I, oh, let's take that. And yeah, let's use that like a weapon, weapon, right? And then you can see in my work, it's full of energy, right? So, um, so yeah, it's the reason why um, I'm also editing almost all my job now because I love to edit. And I think I know exactly what I need and I can go faster and give like stronger uh, for my vision, strong stuff for my vision. So yeah, man, I would say. <laughs> so when you were talking to like these like you mentioned the the dp did he mention other things like when he he spelled out how the industry works like did he say what you kind of should keep your eye out on and and what were you kind of watching throughout like that that time period when you were like doing your first commercials were you still watching like the the um that Japanese animation and like all that kind of stuff, or were you kind of like branching out to other areas? Like maybe when Vimeo started, were you like checking out what other people were doing on Vimeo and all that? Oh, yeah, but now for me, it's like everything, like everybody like sourcing inspiration. Now it's super nice because now you can open. Now I, I start to rewatch French movie because, and I say, oh, I watched it when I was like maybe four years old at TV, right? All these Jean Gabin style. And I love it because it was somewhere, you know, that I saw it at so my parents, all these French hounds, so it start to, to start to come. And then, um, yeah, yeah, like, and also to be honest, of course, a lot of directors are, I, I'm in, I was inspired by a commercial director, right? Of course, or music video, I, 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 I haven't like create everything. Sometimes it's like, wow, for example, I remember like, um, 
the mega force uh, or Yan Ponce Jewel, like for me, they're like everything that I like, they're maybe the best for me, right? Uh, uh, there are a lot of good gear director, but for me, it's like, wow. So you try to inspire and how we can improve it. And, um, but yes, I think it's uh, now I try to take from everywhere. But sometimes when I have like some personal project, I try to move out of what I'm doing because now all this colorful moving, etc. I've done like so much, maybe it's, it's, I really start like six years ago, right? Really start to do some money. So it's not too long. Uh, really like doing some money and being a real director. I would say commercial director, sorry. Um, but now uh, I'm trying to get out of of that, try to change a bit, keeping the vibrancy, but I need to 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 change a bit because oh, I'm a bit stuck, to be honest. It's normal, right? Because the people, they ask, when I'm pitching for commercial, they ask me to do the same that I've done, of course, because they see my reel, they say, oh, or they have something that it's what I used to do, so I'm here because I'm doing that. This is a problem. It's like after you go in a circle, you are just doing the same. I have like a, a good French a friend, uh, DP, who is called uh, Otar Gustafsson, and he was like saying like, man, he's doing so much car, he just wants to get out of car. When there is a, a no car project, he's going on that because he's like, I'm stuck into the car stuff. But of course, happy to do that but the thing is sometimes you need to get out and it's not easy some people say ah oh, you have to get out of the car industry yes but if i get out what i do you know i, I will not receive like other stuff so the problem you need to keep some money and you need to do some work and uh, you have like a life to do so the thing is and you go in a circle so what i do sometimes it's try to have some uh, to answer to answer to your question to have some different inspiration what i like of course and to bring into uh some projects slightly you know like some commercial you don't say to nobody and you put like no to the production no to, no to the client and you put slightly that your project it's changing slightly right and going in the direction you want it's not easy to be honest and when you have a personal project like a music video or whatever you try totally to change. For example, there is one project that for me is one of the best for me, what I did. It's uh, Motor Cycle Boy, you know, with uh, in black and white, a music video with black and white uh, Bozozoku guy from Japan, right? And this one is amazing because it's real. We create nothing. We just film people like a documentary. And we did that crazy. It's it's in black and white. So and this one is, is for me it's amazing because it's just the reality, you know. And we just capture the reality. That comes from my background of, we we'll say documentary style with a 5D when you try to grab some stuff and you shoot as you can shoot. And it was the same style. But we did that with an Alexa and with an amorph with an oak and amorphic. So but and. Um, and and I tried to do black and white stuff, and I directed that with a friend uh, who's called Masato Risser, and a, a half Japanese and French guy. And the thing is, um, here it's a black and white. When you see, it's black and white because I was pissed off of color, right? I don't know if you know. And then, for example, I'm doing a new, new music video next week, and I will do it in black and white. And this one will be more photography, more, but we keep the fun. Uh, try to also change a bit because like, uh, you know, <laughs> I like to film car and people <laughs> moving with colorful stuff, but at one point it's like, okay, uh, I have to change a bit. Yeah. So like, yeah, most people in the, like the commercial world, they get put into a box. Same with like actors, like they, they get typecast as, they, you know, he's the car guy or he's the food guy or he's the guy that does this. So yeah, like it's hard to like you said, get out of that cycle unless you're doing like passion projects or maybe taking less money, but you, you're able to do have more creative freedom. And then um, in terms of like, because my audience is a lot of like car commercial stuff. So what was like the first kind of car commercial that you did? And like, what were you kind of thinking in terms of how you wanted to make it? I will send you the link. If not on my on my two link or three link, <laughs> you will see. Uh, man, how it happened? I did a music video in Japan, 
like with uh, I would send you not this black and white stuff. It was a uh, way before like with a friend, with friend, and with uh, I will send you also the link. It was like with a red epic, and I was into this company, right? And we just let's do a music video, and I was not the director. Everybody was a director. We we're like three people, and everybody was a director. You know, like you the crew. I, the red epic like this, you know, it was so crazy with the lens. It was Canon lens, you know, the the not the PL mount, you know, the shitty Canon doing the focus like this. Uh, and you know, to do the steady cam, we used to have a tripod. You know, the Manfrotto tripod, tripod, and it's a good trick. If you open it perfectly, the big one, not the the one for photography, not the huge one for camera. If you extend everything and you do something perfect, if you put your camera, you have a balance and then you have a steady cam. Man, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, and let me find some picture of some friend that I will send to you. And then we did this music video. And then I remember somebody was working at Renault, a lady. Um, um, she saw my work. I don't know how, right? And we start to talk on, I think it starts the beginning of maybe Instagram, uh, Instagram, the, the beginning or Facebook, I remember. So we start to talk and she ah, I'm Renault and we are looking for some people. And then uh, she, I don't know, it was totally different of what I did after, but she liked the style. And I did like a product film for Twingo. So I will send you the link and it was, everything was colorful, sharp, and it was really interesting. And for me, I had like a, a, a DP who used to do just beauty, beauty car. So it was amazing for me because it was the first time that we had the top light, you know, the, 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 the you know, the track, the techno crane, oh, techno crane, you know, like a small techno crane, etc. So I was like, yeah, this one was uh, super cool. Cool. And then, so from there, did you, like when you start, first started filming cars, like, how did that go? Like, did you want to do more of that? Or once you do one, then somebody else would see it and then it kind of kept on snowballing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not easy because I, after I did like some product film, because I feel, because some people, they ask me, some uh, directors, uh, sometimes we talk on Instagram, oh, you can go in the car industry, etc. I would say, if I have some advice on that, it's just personal advice, huh? it's not like uh, the rule. There are like two two ways I think it's to make it. It's like first, I did some product film, right? Product film is really like not big budget, right? You start with a small shitty stuff, but you do it well because you have your skill from your commercial, so you do it well. And if you have a good DP who is doing uh, uh, cool car shots, and then when you are in the in the uh, arm car, you know, in the Ukraine or, or pursuit arm or whatever. You don't do anything. You're just here and you do that. So you have the guy who is doing the, the crane and one guy is driving. So at the end, it will be nice. So at the end, it's like, it's nice. And then you start to have one, you do a second product film. And sometimes a product film turn into like a commercial concept, you know? So sometimes you go slightly to the commercial and then you start to make it good. If you have some test, you know, like you have a cool color grading, you take the project and you try to do your own director's cut because you have good visual. And you, if you have the chance to have a good car, imagine, I don't know, like a, a nice car, then you try to have a cool commercial from there and you try to tell a story and blah, 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 and you, you build up like this. Or what happens sometime, and now it's happening more and more, it's like some car, agency car, uh, you know, like or client stuff. They want to work with people who doesn't come from the car industry because they want to have some, some somebody else. So sometimes you have the chance, you know, they ask you because you have a special style, right? And they ask you to come here because they want your special style. And then they put like a big team of DOP. And the same thing for DOP. Sometimes they take a car commercial guy and they put a DOP with the joint doing fashion, uh, 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 fashion style or art style. So you have this, this element. So now it's changing a bit. I can see like this, the, 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 they take more risk that some years ago they don't now they are taking more risk so we, this is a two probability to go in the car industry and also to to answer to you um um yeah so i, I me i slightly went like this 
you know and but i remember it was difficult to go in the car commercial and at one point you are doing one small two three four and then now i have like i don't know <laughs> a lot and i have a lot of stuff that i haven't show because sometimes they are good but uh i don't show it because it's really normal right even i will say normal it's repetitive so i don't want to show like everything i will send you some link if you want to show it like for dacia or, uh, or yaris small car it's nice but it's maybe a bit too cute or too normal for me to show it in my reel um and uh, if i'm stuck into that now a bit <laughs> i would say <laughs> because i'm doing like 80 percent it's car commercial uh, i'm pitching so i'm like a lot of stuff now like <laughs> of car <laughs> Um, not too much in, on the US market, uh, mainly on uh, European market. In terms of your reel, you kind of show the, the footage that you want to do more of and you kind of you keep the stuff that you don't want to show like hidden. I try, but you can see everything is a bit, uh, I, I, to be honest, it's, a, it's not to be fair. It's, it's not exactly the same when you see uh, the global commercial with the soccer or the lady dancing with the plants or the BMW commercial or uh, it's, everything is vibrating, fast cut, cool camera move or whatever, but it's, I try to change a bit the mood, um, but it's, it's what I do. Uh, so it's not like totally different. Um, I'm trying to pitch with different style now. Try when I've, I, as you're saying, smaller stuff, I try to take it when it's totally different. Um, try to, to, yeah, and also what I think if I have to change, I really need to do passion project where I need to put some money and then I have the control on that and I can do something like what I am. Uh, it will not be something totally different because I am. it's my style, but with more storytelling. If I have the chance, I would love to bring more storytelling that I really love and with acting, but it's I don't have the too much opportunity. So when I have like some small acting in my stuff or to do the casting, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. You know, I really need that. But you know, um, I need to to do my job first. So yeah. And do you want to just talk a little bit about one of the um, commercials, like the Lamborghini Urus one? For for sure, when I received the Lamborghini, I was like, what? But man, I was doing like, imagine, I was like, because, you know, I went slightly to do better car. At the beginning you do, I don't want to drop some name because I think I respect all the brand, but you are doing smaller, small car, cheap car, etc. So, you know, it's a bit like that. And then I went to the Lombo and when I received the, I, I, I've done like one or two Mercedes in between and Mercedes, it's amazing. And the agency behind Anthony Berlin, so amazing creative people, to be honest, amazing. And uh, and it really, it's really simple stuff. And then it helped me to have the Lamborghini and I pitched and I was like, <gasps> but the budget, it, it, it was not easy, to be honest, um, you know, because it's not a mass market. Huh? Lamborghini, it's not like uh, any BMW or Mercedes or whatever. So it's really this kind of stuff. And me, I remember with the Lamborghini. So I, I just I pitch, I received this stuff. I tried and I was like, yeah, I never win it but with my reel. It's impossible. And I won that. And maybe it was all the music video that I did, etc. And man, the car is like, it's burning, man. It's, it's crazy. It's, it, it's the first time that I was a friend in the arm car. Man, you, we were driving off road with the arm car maybe at 150, 180, I remember, with off-road, like this. And you, you see everything was moving and you try to film the fucking Lamborghini, like, and the creative was like, faster, faster. I was like, guys, the Lamborghini. And then, you know, usually you are always, when you go to 50 men in the street with any car, the client says, ah, it's too fast. It's 50, the car can drive 50. Yeah, it has to be 40, 45. The car look. So the trick is to shoot like, uh, you know, uh, 22, you know, uh, at 50s or 40s or the look when you edit, do the car look like the 22 FPS? So, you know, the trick to make it look faster. And this was the first time that for me, 
Okay. The the when I was like, <clears throat> sorry, I was like, yeah, wow, and I was like so crazy into the car. I went out, and the creative guy was like Italian guy, with so much style, you know, it, Italian like so the fame and the coolness of Italian people. <clears throat> and the guy was like, it's so slow, man. Give something like what? What do you? What? I was like, oh, I remember. We changed two tire of the arm car. It was a huge Mercedes. We tried to make drift. You know, we have one scene where the car is drifting, right? Imagine it's a SUV. It's a four by four. Try to make drift an SUV, four by four. It's technically impossible. So the thing is like, <clears throat> the agents and the client is like, yeah, but we need to see it's Lamborghini. If it's not drifting, it's not a Lamborghini. And we need to uh, go and like, I remember it was so difficult that the guy has to drive so fast to make the drift that I was like, okay, the car will, when, I don't know, it was like, well, to have some speed to make it drift. But I said like, the car will like, just fly. You start to turn the, I was like so afraid, I remember like, you know, it was crazy. So they make it happen and <laughs> until like uh, smoke and killing everything. But yeah, yeah, this one was really fun. Let me check if I've like, <laughs> the DP was like, uh, Jan Doper. So yeah, yeah, just like, in the back, just freaking out at how fast they're driving. You see how it's moving inside, just like. I can send you the video. Yeah, yeah, send me whatever, like the, the behind the scenes stuff. Some video and have. you see inside, it's moving. Uh, but I was like, it was not the fast speed, huh? Because I was not shooting like this. And when it was super fast and everything was moving, I was not uh, so happy. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, it looks very violent in terms of the, the shaking around, but yeah, it's like it has the pop of like your like the yellow of your colorful stuff, but everything around it's kind of dark and then moody, and then you have like the the different scenes and in, in it so it's like the contrasty, like the basketball stuff, like it's very dark and yeah, way. yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, like, it's the world of Lamb Lamborghini. Huh? They want to have this kind of strong etc but you can feel always what i like even if the guy for example the guy was in the dark right but let's bring some laser stuff like always for me it's always important in a picture but for my side for myself huh when i like when i have there is a contrast a contrast in the color or contrast in the image i really like rain for example street photography it's amazing you know strong shadow you have somebody in the foreground full black and behind it's burn or whatever so here it was like okay how oh, i can create some i need at one point a vibration in the image so it can be the yellow car or it can be the beam of the laser or the dot of the laser that your eyes at one point it's like a candy you know like because i feel that but it's also like that it reason why the fruits are colorful or why we like the color candy because you know it was for our own stuff like the color was appealing main like food you know or danger with the red you know etc so the color is really important for us so for well, humanity but whatever <laughs> it's something really obvious what i'm saying but the thing is for me it's also helping me when i like a visual so when i'm shooting and when I feel it's too flat, I'm always saying to the DP, ah, let's bring more contrast, more lights, that it's creating more contrast. It can be black and white, but I, I don't do, I'm not a huge fan when it's really flat. It can be, for example, you know, in the music video that I will share to you, the black and white uh, uh, with a motorcycle guy, it's black and sometimes I have like a square in red, ding, in the middle like this it's helping a lot you will see it's like oh that's cool right but for me that's cool <laughs> i would say what about like there's a scene where the guy is kind of like in space almost there's got a bed and he's like looking out the window and there's like a 
uh, that it was also the agency brief. Huh? Uh, okay. The guy was like, he's so big, so like the level, you know, at one point he look, then when you look above the building, it's above everything. And when after it's above everything, no, no, it's on the space. But you know, it's a director's cut. So there is no too much meaning, you know, because it's like, let's try to do something. But the there is a concept, agency concept, that it was difficult to put in my director's cut, but it was like, um, we are here. No, no, we are here. You know, we are doing that. No, we are doing that. It's reason why you have a build up in each scene. The basketball is here alone. And then you have all the laser. When you look, the basketball is so high. It's always this kind of improving. You know, uh, we are normal. Something breaks the wall. No, we are here. You know, uh, I don't remember the lines, but um, it, it was a stuff that we cannot understand. So for now, to be honest, there is no big concept in this one. It's more uh, visual stuff, so yeah, I will say, yeah. So I saw on, on your on your Instagram, there's like kind of mid journey kind of AI visualizing stuff. Like, are you using that more nowadays to kind of get your concepts out, or just experimenting with like what you can create? Good, good point. Uh, first, the thing that you have on the, I put some stuff. Last time, because I was playing when mid journey, I think it was in December, right? And I play with people with golden uh, armor, you know? Uh, you know, it was uh, one of the stuff that I, I really liked when I was younger. It was Senseiya, right? And Senseiya for me is like Akira, right? It was like so in my blood, I will say. Uh, I will show you a picture of us. Maybe some people they will recognize. So but I was like really young, huh? we are like, this is the title everything it's amazing so and then i have also a tattoo of sensei here so it's like really like uh i'm a sensei so japanese style why i'm saying that uh it's like i try to play with me journey and i put like some inspiration because sensei it's about golden armor right and i try to put some golden armor and i was like oh i was dreaming to do this movie like in the mood how i can create visual because when you see like for example one piece they are launching one piece you know the movie from the from the japanese animation one piece now it's launching now i think everybody's talking about that but always this stuff with with from japanese animation it's not nice right it's never deep it's reason why dark knight was amazing because it was deep right the first cool stuff where it's not a superhero, it's not shoot like a Marvel stuff. It should really deep in a way that it's almost a thriller. You know, it's, it's like seven or whatever. So, and the hero, it's not a hero. So, almost the concept. But the thing is, let's do something like that. So I was just dreaming, like, you know, and I just posted, but now everybody is doing mid-journey. So I, there is no sense for me to do mid-journey. Just to do some... Uh, yeah, some time that when I cannot draw, I'm not a good drawer, I need to I go there or like some transition or effects doing some stuff that I send to the post-production, dropping some stuff or, but like three or four months I, I haven't used, uh, but I was thinking to use it for a project to, to help my idea because I'm not good in Photoshop. I'm not good by my hands, right? So uh, uh, Midjourney helped me uh, just to, and I'm really good uh, on mid journey, to be honest, like dropping some some references, mixing image, what I like, good prompts. And usually after like, yeah, sometimes one or two hours, it's taking time. I can achieve something that I could draw if I can have to bring on my mind. So it's good, but uh, I would say for me, it's a tool like uh, ChatGPT, it's a tool, right? Like Photoshop or After Effects, oh, it's a tool. It's mm, Right. So, yeah. Yeah. No, like it's like you said, if you have those references, like you can put everything together and kind of visualize something really fast. And, and, and the, the problem is that you can tell sometimes like it is mood journey because of like the texture or the way that it's kind of a little bit off. But 
the future, you know, who knows what it's going to be like. It's going to be like the, in terms of the prompts that you won't be able to tell what's real and what's not. You have two choice of wine, wine. You drink wine or whatever, or bread. You have people who are buying bad bread and people who are buying good bread, right? And me, I don't buy bad bread, I'm buying good bread. If like somebody say, oh, look this bread, it's making industry by a robot and it look good and it smell good and it's perfect, but it's doing by a robot. I test it, yeah, it's good, but there is nothing. Then I go with the good bakery, and there is this lady who is doing this bakery stuff. It's a bit more expensive, and I know it's her. Just by the fact that I can, can, can talk to her, I can have it, smell it, and it's almost the same, but I know the products are different inside. There is more love, there is more... I will buy it, because I like it. Look, all the industry of bakery is not dying in France, right? People are doing small bakery, young people are opening bakery. Or like, I don't know, like, or oh, the wine is the same. Now in France, the organic wine is, is big, right? Because some young people just to, to, so what I'm saying, sorry for this long stuff, it, it will be the, it could be the same. Okay, you will have some director who are doing robot stuff or like, you know, uh, intelligence artificial artist and everything will be done on computer and etc. You know, and they will say, oh, the new Netflix TV show done by stuff. Okay. After the first one, second one, people, they will say, yeah, but, you know, it's not art. It's like the independent movie, right? We are going for to see independent movie, even if there is no money, if there is nothing. But there is something so strong that I think all your trauma, it's really difficult to, to recreate your trauma, your trauma is creating uh, some art stuff. So this is what I'm saying, that it's the reason why I'm not really afraid about that, uh, because at the end you will have the choice. Me, I will not go with, uh, to buy a paint. I know this paint is done by a guy, right? I don't yeah. buy something print done by, I because I don't give a shit. And I paid a lot, right? A lot for a, a paint, a guy just painted with some, I don't know, acrylic style, right? So, but because it's art. So I will say that maybe the market will split in two. With people who are doing stuff like art and stuff like industrial stuff. And maybe it's where we'll go. And I will go to this way, maybe. <laughs> oh, if I do a lot of money, I will go that. No, but the thing is like, we don't know. Is there any other kind of car commercials that you could kind of talk about that might be cool to discuss? Like you mentioned uh, the Mercedes Benz things. Yeah, yeah. I tried to, ch to ch the, the Mercedes was really interesting. The way to to, to shoot the blue one with the uh, with the studio. This one is super simple. Top light, blue studio, some clean. Um, and we had like a huge motion control. It was not a boat. And this one was like a Milo. So the Milo is like a long, long, long one arm, super heavy, big. And it was super interesting because this one, you can really turn around and move the car. And the car was like on a turntable. So you can manage to do amazing shots. But also what was interesting here, it's a fact, fact like, uh, you know, if you do a camera movement with uh, just a technical point, because you have some big people, you know, if you shoot with a Russian, with a motion control, you know, we have like micro vibration that you don't see, but you feel it, right? You feel it. So, but by shooting with a Milo, which is really long with a turntable, you can, but you can do that also with a motion control. Normal. You shoot the eight, eight, sec uh, eight frame by second, right? But you need to have nobody in the frame. Right, just a car. So it's much, the much more is more like tut, 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 doing all slowly, but when you speed at twenty-five, it's so free because there is no more vibration, and there is no more motion blur. So imagine, it looks like a CG, uh, 3D. When you look the film, it looks like almost a 3D film, right? And that is super interesting the way we did it. 
And uh, no, the one we I did the last one, the BMW, it was fun because it was full of transition. And it was like really painful to do this seamless transition. For example, to go, it was the first one to go inside the car. Man, this one, it was like, because it was, ah, let's do inside the car while the car is driving, right? That everybody, ah, it's easy. <laughs> it was like, first, you do with Inspire truck. So you go slowly, but it took like 20 seconds to go there. So then, and the problem, it's like, when you start to, you cannot reach, you know, we cannot never reach the perfect car always center, right? So it's like, uh, okay, after 20 take, uh, oh, there is too wind, too much wind. Okay, let's do reverse, right? But reverse, you have to remove the white light behind, you know, the white light because the white light from the reverse, but that you can manage by electronic or in post, whatever. But the problem with the Inspire 2, when you grab the Inspire 2, you know, to really, you are close to the back window, you know, you have to close to the back window, you have it. Actually, then you, the guy is going on the side, you know, the drone, you can do the stuff. The guy is going on the side and then we remove the guy. But the problem with a drone, when you release it, is doing a bump. It's never going straight. It's a so like, And we said, wow, we are not prepared to do that. Shit, I was thinking that it was so easy. Okay, so what we can do? Ah, let's the one to go down, right? And let's use the arm car and do the shots, right? And also the problem, it's like another problem with the Inspire, with a big, um, I don't know who said that in English, the big stuff turning. You cannot do close. Yes, you cannot do close because the wind bouncing on the car is going on the drone and for the safety stuff. But the problem is the camera is so wide that at the end, we need to repair everything in between in post-production with the CGI stuff. So at the end, we have a FPV drone. Let's bring the FPV drone, man. Let's go on the... So the guy just... After one, the car was driving and we have to do it in real. The, the, the drone was going down and reaching the back of the car where at the limit, when it starts to hit the car, shoot, go up. Man, after 50 tech, the guy was going there slowly, slowly, slowly. And at the end, it was, oh, and we have maybe one opening on premiere, looking at that, and we are missing maybe, he was jumping like maybe 1.5 meter up that then we did a scan of the car we did all the picture uh, all the stuff for the cgi and we have the car in cgi so we just did the three frame because of, it's so fast you just need to have the three frame of the car of the to go inside and then we shoot inside and then it's just it's a trick but uh yeah um but this one I really love because we, I faced so many, for example, the shot when we cross inside the restaurant. Like this one, the people opening the two window, we find a restaurant where we can open the window super and then to reach a car. Well, at the end, it's not so complicated, but uh, it was some challenge and I, I like this kind of stuff. In the, like the Inspire 3, how they can do like the motion control in the sky. Yeah, yeah. I shot with the Inspire 3 like uh, one month ago. Uh, first, at night, it's amazing. You know, before it was impossible, like so grainy. That it's super cool. Uh, so pff, now it's cool. Usually it's, ah, it's night, no Inspire. But now, yeah, it's really at night. I shoot really like almost a dark, 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 dark mood. It's good. Um, but I didn't try the, I know it, you have to be really good after it comes because it's moving a bit. You know, the people you have just to retrack a bit, but you have to try it for sure. Yeah. Do you think there's, that's kind of like a, a new style nowadays, like with the super wide lenses, like where's, where's that kind of come from? Is that like the Revenant maybe? Or? I, I, I don't think, uh, because I really want also of the, we are like a lot of directors and I think all these people wanted to bring something different. And when you look like, for example, hip hop music video from the nineties, 
you look, everything is wide angle, like crazy. So I'm saying that he used to, so it came back and um, yeah, it was before the revenant, I think, when everybody start to use the stuff. But then, you know, when we start to do transition, Yan Pons bring uh, and Rinko feel like a, a different director and everybody was inspiring and everybody was pushing like, you know, um, like Valentin Petit, for example, you know, uh, rest in peace for this director just uh, left some, uh, uh, some, some months ago, a French director. And also this guy was like fucking genius, like bringing some creativity about transition. And, you know, people was, young director was like copying him, try to improve and somebody was improving and somebody was improving. So now it starts to be like, I found some stuff like what? What? It's like, wow, so cool. So it's cool. It starts to be the limit. Even me, I can see like, I'm writing always the same stuff. I was like, guys, uh, not me, but you know, the ask from the agency and it starts to be a bit boring, to be honest. So I think we start to be a peak of that really. And, um, and he has to change. He has to go somewhere else. I don't know, but color moving, blah, transition. What we'll do, I don't know. It's like... I think it's something to do with maybe like attention span or something like they, they're trying to keep everything quick, like keep it moving, like with the scrolling, like with like TikTok and Instagram, like people are constantly scrolling. So it's like one shot, next shot, one shot, next shot. So it's constantly hitting you and keeping people's attention. Yeah, I think maybe that's part of part of what it is all about. But I guess it's always been there with music videos and like even music, like, like I did a documentary about Quincy Jones and he's, he's talking about like every 15 seconds to change it up, to keep the ear interested. And then nowadays with like TikTok, it's every one or two seconds. It's like, you know, you got to keep people interested, keep hold their attention, especially with like, yeah, videos. It's like, they want to be grabbed and like held. You're right, because also the brain is going super fast. Last time I was putting some supers into uh, like super fast, like typography, like that, 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 going super fast. And me and people, they can read it like half a second. You can do that, rah, you know, and like I can read it. And I remember the, the, the agency was like, I cannot read it. I need like three seconds to read it. I'm too old. Yeah, but the young generation, they can read it like boom, you know, because our brain can catch it. And the guys, I cannot catch it. So, you know, I can understand that now our brain is going too fast. I don't know if it's a good point, a good stuff. It's the reason why me, I would love to keep everything I'm doing now, but I would love to bring more storytelling. I would love to to slow down the tempo. And um, also, so, yeah, I'm trying to also to go more in storytelling and more emotional stuff. But, you know, I'm doing like people what they asked me to do. But, yeah to wrap things up is there any like advice that you could give to like future filmmakers or people thinking about maybe getting into directing car commercials anything that you could kind of give them as advice first i will say that generally don't listen to people right because me a lot of people were like give me like oh you don't have to do that don't do that last time i was talking with a friend a producer and he was like man you know, you have to step out of, you have to be careful to stay too much in the car commercial. I say, why? If I love it, why? You know, people always say, ah, oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, be careful, you have to be more like this. You know, people always give you some, I'm not saying like good advice. I'm talking when people always think how you have to, you know, like, oh, you don't have to do, uh, I don't know, interview on internet because you are losing time. It's pointless, right? Uh, you know, like always people say, no, I'm doing what I want to do. So I feel that for me, it's always like, I don't give a shit. I, I'm taking it, but I will do what I think is good. Maybe it's good, but I will go where, and me is good. To be honest, I have a long journey to do huh, in the industry, uh, commercial industry. Huh? Uh, so I would love to continue because I think it's a good job. And for me, it's an amazing job. I don't want to say it's art or it's like passion stuff. It's an amazing job. I have this opportunity. So yeah, but um, I would say like, don't listen too much 
what people think because uh, everybody has his own journey and everybody has his own story and there is no pattern right there is no pattern for sure um that and for the car industry what i would say it's like as i was saying before um if you want to go there maybe you have to write go slightly in some film that doesn't look sexy but you know the clients always when you have some car stuff they say oh let's believe in because if you don't have the car industry for some brand they are so afraid not to go with somebody so even if you have like the opportunity to do a music video let, let's use a nice new car let's do some car new car shots use like an arm car arm car you can find it you can manage to have it like for some money so you can bring it in your music business do nice stuff etc and then some transition and then build up your stuff like this in my point of view huh? it's for the normal process now you can go from other stuff but yeah i will say build slightly your stuff even if it's like a not nice job yeah whatever well uh, thanks so much for talking to us it's, it's so interesting like your story has different everybody's story is different but it, it's very interesting how you how you got started and how you built up over time and and the, the work that you're creating is awesome so I can't wait to see what else you create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. A lot of stuff in director's cut are coming. No, no some, some, something else that it's really important and why it helped me a lot. I have like so much director's cut, and always I, I always even when the job is not crazy, I'm, I need to do a director's cut because I need to see what I can take from that. And sometimes I have amazing surprise. Sometimes it's really bad, project, not good project, and I take it and I try to 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 create something. So I have the chance to edit, to do some design, sometimes to do the grading or have a good team. So I know I can manage or putting some money on the director's cut. So just for me, just to sleep well, you know, and don't, not to lose a fight, you know, because sometimes I will say fight. You do a project, you love your project, and boom, the agency or whatever the client is killing the project or the production or whatever, the money, or the timing, you know? And even when it's really shit, huh? I'm doing a director's cut because I need to see. And sometimes really good stuff happen. And from there, um, you know, it's like, oh, so I'm really giving a lot of energy on director's cut because and now I have a list of maybe, to be honest, 20 directors get to do. I don't know how I will do that, but some good stuff will come and uh, car stuff, like uh, good car stuff will come maybe in three, four months because it's a uh, big process, but whatever. Yeah. So thank you, yeah, man. I, Rory. No, no, no worries. I think that goes back to like, yeah, taking advantage of the opportunities. Like, you, you know, even if you have like a car, might not be the best car, but you're in a good location and you have an arm car and it's like, okay, I've all these crew and all these people, like you could easily just say, oh, like I'm just going to shoot this car and then go home and have an early night. Or you could take advantage of where you're at and, and cap capture all these extra shots that might, might elevate the product to something else, but the client maybe don't want it. But then you can do it for yourself, like with the director's cut. Of course, and also something uh, last advice that I will say that for me, when I take a project, even if it's not really crazy, let's say not a good brand, not a good project, I'm giving a lot of passion. I'm trying to make it good and to work with D DP that are the same like me, that they try to make it good, even if it's a shampoo commercial with a shitty stuff. Because if you give love, if you are like giving some stuff, sometimes some stuff are happening. And from there, you can create like something crazy. And also, after the shoot, after the shoot, right? It is experience in the future. What will rest? What will, you know, what will stay? Sorry. Your film, nobody don't give a shit, even if it's a good commercial, right? The money, because the money you maybe invest in the school of your kids, or maybe you buy some investment stuff in your own. So the money is helping you also to do some other stuff. So the money, of course, so you have to take it seriously. And the, the love 
you bring on your set with people you meet new people so you need to this moment doesn't ask to make it stressful of course sometimes it's difficult but just try to make it cool and peaceful and try that everybody at the end when you finish you are full of experience you have like oh I, it was amazing experience, you know. Yeah, I met these guys, these girls, these people, this producer, this na na. And at the end, because that you will keep all your life, right? And these people will keep all their life, and they remember remember this moment in 20 years. Ah, it was fun when we did the the Ukraine arm there, and the, the car broke and whatever. So that is for me really important. Even when it's a shitty project try to give the maximum of passion because the uh, moment you will live with some people you will share it's you will it's a part of your 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 memory so that for me and then if you give the full energy sometime happens so i will send you a, a a project where was nobody was wanting to go on that nobody i was the only maybe director it was for stuff for Snuggle for your country, snuggle, right? Or it's a comfort. You know the washing machine with a teddy bear. I receive a brief of snuggle, the small teddy bear stuff. And it was a, 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 a real uh, Muppet, like not 3D, like, a, you know, small teddy bear. And they're saying, and the board was ugly, like people dancing with teddy bear, uh, you know, like ugly ugly like uh, uh, stuff for clothes, like like shampoo commercial. And I remember it was in Istanbul for Istanbul market. And my agent said, oh, they are saying it's a bit too open, etc." I took it. Man, I broke it. I, br I bring all the love here. I took some friend. Hey, man, do you want to try to do a CGI one? Maybe they will buy the CGI one. Let's not go with a Muppet, right? Imagine the Muppet teddy bear, how it can be ugly, you know? And I was like, let's do it. And we create this snuggle, this uh, smaller teddy bear in CGI, some friend with a company. We sell that and say, oh, wow, that's cool. That's nice. And then we try to bring some love in the project with a good DP, good light, etc. Now you will see it. It's cool. And this one bring, bring me a lot of job. And you know what? Now the identity of this small teddy bear in all the region of Istanbul, etc., is the official one. And you can see big picture, every big commercial in Istanbul, in all the Turkey, with the teddy bear you create with friends. So the thing is, but it's so cool. And I will send you the link. And for me, the example, even when you receive a brief look shit, sometime by bringing love and energy, you can create something. So it will be the it's, ending world. I can see it on the Vimeo, it looks awesome. Like how do you convince like a client that already has maybe it's like the advertising agency or the client like how do you convince them to go above and beyond like was there more money involved did you have to convince them to spend more money or were you just using what you had no but my friend who was doing a really good price for the cgi they were building their company etc and the agency was like it was funny because the agency the uh, creative guys uh, the ecd was saying like you know what I believe in you. I like your stuff. Do everything you want. <laughs> okay. I don't remember the client was like, oh, and you know what? I think until the end, but once they saw the energy, they're saying, okay, we love it. But you know what? After I did the second one, the third one, and the fourth one, and it was going down, 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 because, you know, the first one was like a robbery. Like we came and we did what we want. They like it, but at the end, you know, the headquarters and everybody, ah, oh, let's just do the second one less, then less, less. So, it's normal. I, I push a lot, but uh, for selling some washing uh, product, clothes stuff. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. But the, the ECD of the agency was like saying, okay, do you know what? I remember they're saying, we don't present until it's not finished. So, even the 3D, the animation, the grading. Yes, it's dangerous. I don't give a shit. They will take it like this or not. Okay. I respect. So we finished everything you represent and, uh, and said, no, we have no time now. We have to launch. Okay. Uh, it was fun. No, no, like, yeah, it's, it looks awesome. Like, but like some, 
some clients or some brands might be stuck in the like the very clinical like toothpaste mayonnaise commercials just like white walls and just like clean everything and that's all they want to do so like to to go outside the box and show them something different it's it's risky but it, it, it's obviously a paid off for you for that one it's awesome yeah but it was i was saying like sometime let's uh try i'm doing that for all the job huh? never like uh, giving up or like oh i don't give a shit it's a bad brand oh it's a bad agency or oh, i don't give i take my money and out no because it will fire back it will come back to you if you don't if people will see that so this is the advice that i give like even if it's a shit you think it's a shitty stuff do the maximum you can do if i have to say if for me it works I'm here, I'm working, I'm happy. Huh? Um, but I don't try to not consider it because people are paying you and, you know, it's work for everybody, for, you know, technician guy. It's, I don't want to, oh, I don't lie yeah, on the show. Uh, you have technician guys that are working every day doing something that it's not exciting like a director and just bring some bad stuff because you think you are not doing art. We are selling product. You have to be honest. We are not doing feature film or whatever. So let's do it properly for the client, for the agency, and hopefully for us. But for me, I'm always, to be honest, I'm always happy when client agency are happy. Because you give love and all the technicians have to go back at home that don't care sometimes about your 16 hour shoot, you know, because you want to make the perfect. Yes, of course. Some I'm pushing, but I'm saying that. I'm not taking in like personally that, you know. And at the end, it works. You know, I'm really cool. But I will say some people say, ah, no, I stress on set. Yeah, I'm stressed on set. I'm trying to sometimes to 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 be uh, angry, like, ah, what the f happening? But not to give like this, not consider the people or whatever. I think at the end, as I was saying, your film, nobody don't give a shit. You know, at the end. And you don't give a shit at the end. It's like uh it's a commercial and just for the client selling some product. So let's make it good. How do you like negotiate at the start? Like if they already have an idea, like how do you kind of just push and push and push without upsetting anyone? Like, how do you, like, do you say it's a market? Depend of the market. Yeah. Some market you can push during the treatment and then after you can slightly push and then try to push and some market is really complicated. You can feel already on the board when they have like a radio storyboard really precise, you can, and I, I'm always asking to them, like, what is the range for me? And sometimes uh, <laughs> it's already past, you know, all the control on US, US market is crazy. Like uh, whether you have a board, uh, good luck to, last time I, it was the Lexus one. Uh, you know what? I can send to you the truth. I don't know if I'm, I can send to you a treatment. Maybe you can hide the text and everything, just a picture of one commercial and you will see what we deliver. Uh, because we wrote a treatment, we want it, but the film is super close of the agency brief because they bring me slightly. So I win it because ah, it's a cool guy. But at the end, I tried to do my stuff, but I went slightly because the US market was like, no, no, man, we have to follow the agency brief. Yeah, but I did a treatment. Yeah, but we don't give a shit because the, the, the agency brief is already validated by the test, you know, when they are doing all the test stuff. And we cannot go back from that. Okay. So, but I would say, but it's good. It, at the end, it's a super good film. Huh? I like it. But uh, it's a Lexus. You will see uh, with a big uh, LX, LX car. Um, yeah, so, so, like, so like you, each step along the way, you like, do you kind of just like, oh, can we change the guy to a girl or can we change this blue to a green? And the, each time they're like, no, no, no. Like it's just always constantly back and forth like that or? No, no, to be honest, some some stuff like I did like a, a Porsche a commercial, uh, three, three film that they are, will be launched in January. Super nice. Everything that I wrote in the treatment, try to ch I challenge everything on the treatment. I knew that I can challenge here. I challenge, we won because it was really, we upgraded. And then during the shoot, they try to really, okay, we believe you do everything you want. Oh, okay. 
So I was like totally free, to be honest. And at the end, it's super cool because I knew also I'm not going crazy. I know the car industry. I start to know all the brands. So I'm like, I knew where I can push which brand, etc. So, and sometimes they push you. For example, Mercedes, the agency is always pushing you more than you think you can push because they're so creative. They say, okay, let's push. Let's do something more. I know, like, I think I was talking to a guy in the UK and he's saying that there's laws that they can't show the car going over a certain speed, like 50 miles an hour, whatever it is, and uh, on the public road. But I guess there's less rules depending on, like, if you're in the certain regions. It's complicated. You cannot yeah. go, uh, even last time I have, like, I, I needed to do, uh, I will show you another commercial maybe. It was for Yaris. It's not on my reel. And they wanted to show that there was one car fast and one car not fast. It was the same if you use the hybrid and there. Uh, but the problem, it's like all the concept was into the city. So how you can show the car is fast at 50 or 40 kilometers. So the problem is like, you know, so, and, they, and they realize that on the shoot. Because even if we want to go faster, somebody from the client agency, hey, guys, we have a legal stuff. It's for Europe. It's forbidden. Forget so you have a lot of way to make it. It's to shoot, as I was saying, at 22 FPS. Then you have this kind of uh, a bit faster stuff. Or because I don't like to, to ramp to make, you can make 5% or 10% faster, but you feel, you know, the vibration, everything is excellent. I don't like too much. You can, but you lose some motion blur, blah, blah. So, but, or put the dynamism with the arm car, the camera. The car can go at 50, but if you go, the arm car is going at 100, <laughs> you cross it, yeah, the car is going at 50, but me, I'm going at 100. So, you know, or, or FPV drone, look, the FPV drone is going from, 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 and the client say, even the client say, ah, it looks like the car is going fast. The car was going at 35. So this is a trick. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the smoke and mirrors of the, yes. yeah. No, well, thanks so much. Um, is there any anything else that you wanted to talk about? But I think good. I, yeah, I see I see my wife like turning around me and say, ah, "Your daughter is going to sleep." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'll let you put your daughter to sleep. But um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. And um, thank you to you. Hopefully, if I'm ever in France, I'll come and visit you. And if you're ever in LA, let me know. Man, I will. I will. I might. I have a shoot, I don't know, but in LA, uh, I don't know. We don't know if it's LA or Chicago, but in case, of course, man, it will be a pleasure. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Fabrice, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, man.